So who absolutely loves doing research? No. Well, let's face it. Research can be a little dull at times. Granted, it depends what you're studying. If it's mandatory, if it's for personal use, when we're talking about scholastic research in particular, going through a bunch of journals, going through the citations, trying to make sure that it's from peer reviewed material and credible sources can be very daunting. So how can we make that a little easier? Welcome back. I'm Dr. D. And today I want to show you something that can easily, easily streamline your research really based on some really cool artificial intelligence and different criteria that you can set up. And well, let's just get into the software. I want to introduce you to consensus. Now, this is a pretty interesting way to approach research and search not just by large databases, which it does have, but it adds different qualities to the research and kind of in a way helps you find exactly what you're looking for, but also finding maybe some articles that are in opposition to your current thesis or premises. So really what this does, we'll take a look here. There's some frequently asked questions. I do recommend going through the about and blog posts if you want more details, but it takes semantic scholar. You can enter certain research phrases. They've updated this recently that allows for more language learning, natural language processing style results based on your searches. So here we'll go into the consensus meter in a little bit, but basically, and let's take a look here. Things have changed quite a bit since I started using this. I actually created a video once before, and then they created all of these new updates or they release these new updates. So I thought it would be good to go over this again. They have some really interesting features. You can actually add this research GPT within chat GPT as a plugin. They don't have a mobile app, but you can use it on mobile by saving it to your home screen. Now let's take a look at how this works. Well, let's just click a try search. So what it'll do is take the top, I think, 20 articles that it finds related to your search criteria. And it doesn't have to be in the form of a question anymore. That semantic search criteria is something that they did update recently, but it will give you some results. It gives you a general analysis of everything that it pulled from these 17 papers. Sometimes it does up to 20, I believe. Of the ones that it finds most credible, it will give you a brief summary. So you kind of have an idea of where you're going before even opening a single article. Now there are different filter criteria. So if you kind of want to see, all right, well, I thought it was going to be yes. And this is saying maybe no, let's just check out the no's. Which ones say no? Okay. It looks like just this one of the 17. So that's kind of to be expected. Now, if we get rid of this filter and just kind of go through it, gives you yes, no, gives you a summary of what it is, gives you the journal article and the citations, just like any other search results, Google Scholar, for example, will do. But it also tells you which ones are highly cited, the types of trial they are. It saves a lot of time, so you don't need to necessarily go through in detail dozens and dozens of papers when you can just pick from the ones that are in line with what you're looking for. Now, the snapshot is quite interesting. This also saves a lot of time because now you don't need to see or go through and read the abstract. And sometimes it's not in the abstract. You have to read the intro. Sometimes it's not there either. You've got to go all the way down to the methods section before seeing the sample size and what it constitutes, what methods they used. And then it gives you a brief summary of the outcomes. So just this alone, I think, can save a ton of time when you are trying to find articles that are related to what your search criteria or your presentation or your literature review is about. Now, if we wanted, I don't know why anyone would want to turn off the synthesis, but then you get just the articles without the synthesis and everything is in beta. It's still a relatively new company. So, you know, take everything with a grain of salt. You do have to fact check, but it gives you a good starting place. You can also filter just like any other research journal 
by the year of publication, study types, details, etc. So you can really get into the details. Do we want just these? Okay, let's apply. Let's see what it shows us here. Interesting. Now I was able to pull up 19 papers instead of the 17 from a previous search. All we did was change the filter criteria. Now, when something like this happens, I don't understand exactly why. So good idea to maybe shoot their chat support a message. They might have an answer. They might not. Again, everything's in beta testing. So we can kind of see as they progress what it's searching for, how it's searching, and our feedback makes the product better in general anyway. But let's pick something that isn't so mundane. Let's pick something maybe that's more controversial. All right. So of these 11 papers, the vast majority say no. I'm curious to see what those few that say yes are. And these are the higher quality articles that we're looking at specifically just the meta-analysis, systematic review, and RCTs, randomized control trials. We're not looking at everything. And just curious if we were to take this filter off, what would the results be? And this is just pulling from schematic, schem I can't say it, the scholar database that we showed earlier. And there are plenty of other sources out there with different journals, different articles that might agree or disagree with this to a greater degree. Now, interesting, if we take those off, now we're getting more lower quality studies within this search. And we do see that more of them say no, or say yes, I should say. That's interesting. Okay. So if someone was to take this completely out of context and just look at the results here without filtering by quality of journal, you might come to the conclusion that maybe it does help. Of course, we never stop at this stage in research, but it is a great way to get started on something. And you know, we can take this, we can create lists with the articles, we can add to a different list based on based on different search criteria. Maybe we want to change this to something more broad. And now, hypothetically, we might get different research articles based on this. And in fact, there are different numbers here. So there's a good chance that there was. And we can add those to the list. We can change the criteria again, add those to the list. Eventually, we have a large repository of articles that we can use for a literature review, a narrative review, something along those lines. Now, to actually produce a high quality research article. That is a lot more steps that hopefully we'll get into in a future video. But in the meantime, I just wanted to show this because it's a really cool tool. I think it looks nice and easy to navigate. You can export all of the articles, pop them into other software you have, or maybe a spreadsheet where you're keeping all of your research citations. And it just gives you a nice, easy way to begin your research process. All right. That's all I got for today. Hope you enjoy. Let me know if you think this tool's interesting or if you have another one that might work better or similar or in conjunction with this. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. All right. Take care.